friends, this video on mechanical properties of solid part 9 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Please make sure that you have watched all the videos from part 1 to part 8 before going ahead with part 9. Let us suppose, let us suppose this is the copper wire. This copper wire is connected end to end to another wire which is made of steel. So we say, so we say this is the copper wire and this is the steel wire which are connected end to end. And both have the same diameter of 3 mm. When stretched by a load, the net elongation is found to be 0 0.70 mm. That means when we attach a load here, let us suppose we attach a mass of mkg. So when this load is attached, this entire string gets stretched by 0 0.70 mm. So we have to find the load applied. That means we have to find the value of m. That how much mass do we connect to its end so that this scenario happens. That is so that it gets stretched by 0 0.70 mm. Now let us try to find out the stress in this case. What would be the stress? Stress is nothing but force per unit area. Now what would be the force here? Force would be given by the weight of the body that is mg. So this will be force and what would be the area? Area is nothing but the cross sectional area of the wire. So that is pi r square. Now for both these wires the radius is the same. So we can say that the stress is same for the stress is same for the copper wire as well as the steel wire because for both the copper and the steel wire mass is the same, g is a constant, pi is a constant and r is also the same. Now using this what we will do? We will say that stress for the copper wire is equal to the stress for the steel wire. Now we also know that Young's modulus is equal to stress by strain. Right? So using this we can write that stress is equal to Young's modulus into strain. So we can say stress of copper wire is equal to Young's modulus of copper into strain for copper wire. Similarly, stress for steel wire is Young's modulus of steel into strain for the steel wire. So this we can write Young's modulus for copper wire into what is the strain for copper wire that is change in length divided by original length. Similarly, we can write here also for the steel wire that is change in length divided by the original length. Now from this we can write change delta LC divided by delta LS will be equal to YS by YC into LC by LS. Right? Now we know the value of Young's modulus for steel and Young's modulus for copper and we also know the initial length of copper and steel. The initial length of copper was 2.2 meters, the initial length of steel was 1.6 meters, right? So using these values, we can find the value of delta LC by delta LS. So this will be 2 into 10 to the power 11. The value of Young's modulus for a particular material will always be constant. So these are the values of Young's modulus for copper and steel respectively. And this is these are the values of the length of the copper and the steel wires. So using this, we see that delta LC by delta LS comes out to be 2.5. So this is the first relation which we obtain. Now we can say that delta LC plus delta LS is equal to 7 into 10 to the power minus 4 meters. How come? Because the question says 
that when the load is applied the total the entire elongation that is the total elongation of the wire is this much that means the elongation of copper wire plus the elongation of steel wire is this much now we have two equations equation 1 and 2 using these two equations we can calculate the value of delta lc and delta ls so from 1 and 2 we get delta lc is equal to 5 into 10 to the power minus 4 meters and delta ls is equal to 2 into 10 to the power minus 4 meter these are simple mathematics because delta lc plus delta ls you know and also delta lc is equal to 2 delta lc is equal to 2.5 times delta ls so using these two you can find out these two values now you use the formula for stress now we can say that stress is equal to force per unit area which is again equal to yc into delta lc by lc right on one hand it is force per unit area on the other hand it is young's modulus into strain so we can say force is equal to area into young's modulus into delta lc by lc so we can say area is equal to pi into r square where r is 1.5 into 10 to the power minus 3 whole square into young's modulus that is 1.1 into 10 to the power 11 into delta lc is 5 into 10 to the power minus 4 this entire thing divided by 2.2 so this comes out to be 1.8 into 10 to the power 2 newton so that means this is the load which is applied when i talk of mass that is the value of the mass when i talk of load is it is basically the weight of the mass so weight of the mass is this force because this force is nothing but f is equal to mg so if you divide this value by acceleration due to gravity you get the mass of the object right so when i say what is the load that is added it is basically the weight of the mass which is added to the wire now let us look at the fifth problem it says a 14.5 kg mass fastened to the end of a steel wire of unstretched length 1 meter is whirled in a vertical circle with an angular velocity of 2 revolutions per second at the bottom of the circle. The cross-sectional area of the wire is 0.065 cm square. Calculate the elongation of the wire when the mass is at the lowest point of its path. That means, let us suppose there is a wire in this way and there is a mass attached to it. So, this is moved in a circular path. So, it is moved in a circular path in this way. Now the question says what are the values that are given? Mass is given as 14.5 kgs. The length of the wire is given as 1 meter. That means this length is given as 1 meter. Right? Also the velocity is given as 2 revolutions per second. This is the angular velocity which is given because the particle is moving in a circular path. So it is talking about the angular velocity what else is given and the cross-sectional area let me denote it by capital A is given as 0.065 cm square these are the values that are, that are given we have to calculate the elongation of the wire when the mass is at its lowest point that means when the mass comes to this point when the mass comes to this point what is the elongation of the wire so that means we have to calculate the value of delta L Right? Now in this case what would be the total force which will give rise to this elongation? One will be of course mg that will be acting downwards that is always there because of the acceleration due to gravity. 
there will be another force which will be involved when the object is moving in a circular path what is that that is the centripetal force that means the force due to this centripetal acceleration so that would be mass into acceleration now what would be that centripetal acceleration centripetal acceleration is nothing but omega square r where r is the radius where r is the radius right so we can write m into omega square r what is radius here radius is nothing but this length of the wire here so we can write m omega square into l now if we put the values m is 14.5 into g that is 9.8 plus m is again 14.5 into omega is 2 revolutions per second that is 2 square into L what is L? L is 1 meter. So this comes out to be 200 Newton. So this is the value of the force that will give rise to the stress. Now we know that what is Young's modulus? Young's modulus is nothing but stress divided by strain. Now what is stress? Stress is nothing but force per unit area and what is strain? Strain is nothing but change in length divided by the initial length that is L. So from this we can say that delta L is equal to F into L divided by A into Y. Right? So here we already know the value of F. F is 200 Newton. What is L? L is 1 meter. What is A? A is the cross-sectional area that is 0 0.065 into 10 to the power minus 4. And what is Y? That is Young's modulus which is 2 into 10 to the power 11. Right? So this on calculating we get the value of delta L as 1.539 into 10 to the power minus 4 meters. So this would be the value of delta N. That is this would be the elongation when the mass is at the lowest point in its path. So in this case the only different thing which we did is when we were trying to evaluate the force other than mg there was another force due to the centripetal acceleration which was given by m omega square into L. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thank you once again.